Hey everybody, this is Adam with Apex Onshore, uh, and I'm here to bring you episode 2 of the Tackle Tuesday series in collaboration with Spartan Tackle, and especially, exclusively, for the LBSF Land Based Shark Fishing Facebook group. Um, last week, Travis spoke on cable leaders and a few variations on them, float rigs and uh, rattle rigs. This week, I will be talking about wire leaders and heavy duty like monster leaders so um first off a little bit of introduction uh, i've been shark fishing about five years now um, i'm primarily out of the east coast uh or the east coast of florida central east coast um i do some traveling um i've been to the panhandle carolinas a uh, few states around around there so um around our area we primarily run into a lot of hammerheads black tips and then bull sharks, tiger sharks, lemon sharks. We have a fair number of large model sharks if you know where to look and how to find them and how to catch them. So a lot of the gear in our area is specifically orientated towards large fish or the possibility of catching large fish. Uh, there's no guarantee that we're gonna catch them when we go out there, but it happens often enough that you know going heavier is safer. So first off with wire rigs, there are some pros and cons to wire and cable. Cable has more flexibility. Uh, it generally, in my experience, it will last through more fish. Um, the problem with cable is there's a the potential that strands can break, untwist, unravel a large shark with, say, uh, bull sharks or tiger sharks. They can work their way through it strand by strand. So in situations like that, it can be useful to fish a single strand wire. There are four, about four sizes that are commonly used, number 15, number 19, 22, and 25. Usually people use 15 and 19. 15 gets used for smaller sharks like black tips and all that. 19 is like the general all around one and doubling up 19 is kind of the standard for catching big, big fish. Number 22 and number 25 is great, but it's harder to find. There's limited retailers for it. Uh, we carry a little bit of it. Uh, Worldwide carries a little bit of it. Other than that, it's exceedingly difficult to get your hands on. So, and that's because there's one manufacturer and they're backed up most of the time. So, when you're using wire, you want to keep your lengths shorter. Around three to five feet, four feet is what I generally use on all rigs for bite sections, but especially for wire cable, I'll let it string out a little bit longer because if its flexibility doesn't get twisted up. The con with wire in longer length is if a black tip picks up or some other ac acrobatic species moves around a lot, they have a tendency to twist it up, kink it up. It's just, it's the same as when you make your haywire twist and you bend off the tag end. A black tip can do that. 40 pound black tip, black tip can do that. Bust through 19 wire like it's nothing. Like single 19 wire like it's nothing. And a thousand pound tiger shark can't bite through it. So um, keep that in mind when you're selecting what type of rig to use. It's a good idea to have a wider selection of rigs for different situations, you know, as Travis had talked about. And having some lighter and heavier rigs really helps out different types of wire. There's AFW and Malin. Those are your two major wire manufacturers. Generally, Malin has a lot more memory on their wire. It comes off in coils as you, it doesn't straighten out nearly as well. But Malin is the one that makes the larger wires. AFW only goes up to number 19, which is about, I believe it's 360 pound wire. Um, Malin, their 19 is supposedly rated for 400 pound. Um, it's just manufacturers stating what they want to state for strength. But Malin also goes up to number 27, which is really not all that useful. It is just ridiculously stiff. So 25 is about the limit you're generally going to see fishing. Um, so yeah, those are your pros and your cons and different types. Now, when you're using wire, I've learned something. So with cable, there's certain ways to tie. Um, tie in your cable and crimp it to keep your hook in a fixed position and as a lot of people have discovered fixing your hook in position helps with your hookup ratio the way I generally do this with a wire leader is through electrical tape and if you can notice this is AFW wire and it pretty well just straightens right out it's been coiled up for a couple of weeks um, 
you tape your juncture, junction right there and it keeps it fixed more in position and I have discovered that my hookup ratios are better when I do this. Um, it also actually protects your hook a little bit. I do not buy into the electromagnetic thing with the uh, sharks detecting the hook. Maybe there's something to it, maybe there's not, but I don't personally buy into it. When doubling wire though, I will use electrical tape along the whole length. I did an example here with part of it. The reason for this is when you're leadering a shark and you're using doubled up 19 and whatever wire, if that opens up while you're leadering and you get something caught in there and the shark pulls on it while you have pressure on the reel, you can come away missing a finger or really cut out badly. And it also has the added benefit of making it a little harder to cut yourself with a wire if you're holding on to it and the fish takes off or something like that. Um, you can tape up single, single lengths of it. I generally only do this on double, but it does make it a little bit easier to hang on to. Here at Apex, we've got actually a whole line of wire rigs and you get different options for your bite sections, but we'll go over a couple of them here. This is basically what amounts to the standard big fish leader that most people make. It's 35 feet long total, 31 feet of 1200 pound monofilament in a four foot bite section, 12 aught Roscoe swivels, four aught Roscoe snap swivel sliding on it, double crimped, back twisted ends, as you can see, about a foot, and then we use offshore loops. This has less to do with the strength of the connection or not trusting my crimps or anything like that. And, and it's mostly got to do with handling. And the reason for that is, is when you go to leader fish, trying to hold on to just a single strand here is significantly easier with the large monofilament, which is kind of critical with big fish leaders. It makes it significantly easier to handle big fish on the beach. With your offshore loop, if it's in the hand, it gives you something bigger to grab onto. So I generally don't cinch down my ends. I'll offshore loop just about everything. Um, it's that's all it really is for it. Um, it does have a nice little added benefit if you do crimp too lightly in some slits. It's not going anywhere. But now, in addition, the bite section on this one is single 19. We also do uh, double 19 and 22 and for a limited time 25 while supplies last on it to a 20-0 catch-all circle hook. Uh, these are my favorite hooks out here. I've caught almost every big fish I've ever caught on a catch-all 20 -0, So Moving up, we have a XHD 45. Same general leader as this with two differences. There's 41 feet of 1,200-pound monofilament instead of 31 and the hooks are bigger. We use a 24-0 catch-all and a 16-0 Moose Dad Demon. Um, other than that, they're basically the same exact rig. They're just upsized. The reason for this is when the water's rough or you can't get to leader or the fish wants to dig in behind one of the sandbars, a longer leader helps you get a hold of the leader, pull that fish in, and you're good. You know, you can get it to the beach quicker. We've got a new model here for this year. It is a 70 foot, 75 foot super duty rig. Uh, 71 feet of 1200 pound monofilament, and 4 feet of bite section again. This rig is specifically made with number 25 wire. Uh, the, by special request, I can change the bite section there or uh, to cable or uh, some other wire. But 25 is a standard on it. And we've got this monster circle hook. This is a Florida, Texas, New York, all the other ones that require non-stainless inline hooks, legal 26-0 uh, hook. This thing is gigantic. There's two and a half inch gap on it. Um, it is a monster. The thing about this is, as with all larger hooks, and especially when they got a large gap, you want to set your hook at a high drag setting. You want to set your hook at a high drag setting because if you don't and it doesn't punch through, you can bend out your hook extremely easily. A, a black tip can bend out this hook if it gets it and it starts jumping and spinning. Um, a lot of people have experienced this, so it's not like an unknown factor. So, all right.
we're getting up there in time, so I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I want to thank Travis for having me uh, join him on this, and I'm looking forward to doing some more episodes. We're going to have 12 total episodes, so there'll be 10 more after this uh, every week for the next 10 weeks, obviously. Um, if you get some time, come, come over and check out the website, spartantackle.com. Uh, Apex Onshore, we're working on an actual website right now. It will be apexonshorefishing.com. But for now, if you need to contact us, make order or make an order, um, you've got questions, or you just want to talk about shark fishing, hit me up on my personal Facebook page or the uh, Apex Onshore business page on Facebook and Instagram. We can get you an order uh, made out. Um, I believe that's everything. And... Uh, Hopefully y'all can uh, get a little something out of the series we got. So, tight lines.